Hello. Um, my name is Rodrigo. I'm a postdoc in Larry Goldstein Lab. And today we're going to speak about my project involving traumatic brain injury inducing Alzheimer's disease using human derived uh, neurons. So the idea is uh, that a traumatic brain injury incident early in life could increase your chance to have Alzheimer's disease late in life. And uh, in fact, like a traumatic brain injury incident could increase four times your chance to have sporadic Alzheimer's disease. But that's not the whole story, since we know that some, some patients, they have traumatic brain injury, then late in life they have Alzheimer's disease, but other individuals that can have traumatic brain injury, they don't have Alzheimer's disease later on. And they, what's the difference between both subjects? We think that the difference could be the genome. And we think that we could use IPSC technology to start to answer this type of questions. And with IPSC technology, we can capture the genome of different patients, and we can make IPSC-derived neurons. But the, to study traumatic brain injury, we need to injure these neurons in the dish. And this is, is the first challenge that we need to face. And then to injure neurons in a dish, we have to, to learn a little bit more about how traumatic brain injury, the neuropathology of traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury happens when mechanical force deforms the brain, and since the brain, the different layers in the brain have different biomechanical uh, properties, the brain tends to shear and stretch in different directions, and then we have axonal injury, as you can see over there. And the idea is that this is stretch and strain could be the etiology of the, the neuropathological mechanism that's had taken place downstream of uh, traumatic brain injury itself. Then we thought that we could maybe mimic the stretch strain in, in cultural neurons, looking to see if we could study the uh, downstream outcomes and maybe study traumatic brain injury in, uh, inducing Alzheimer's disease. To do so, we put together this, this microfluidic device that is mainly made of PDMS, and then using a, uh, a vacuum pump, we can induce like an airflow, and then the device, the substrate in the device is stretched, and you can see here, like when you activate the device, this is just the substrate. You can increase in the, and you see the, the substrate increasing in size. And the idea is if you play neurons, the neurons, when you activate this device, they also stretch. And then you can see the, the little uh, yellow arrow showing that how you increase the length of the axons. And if you release, you, the axons come back to normal, but there is some morphological change. And then this shows us that we can, okay, we can injure the cells, but what's the biological relevance to use the system to study something as traumatic brain injury and Alzheimer's disease relationship? Then to do, to show the biological relevance of our model, we take advantage of acute phenotypes that are seen in traumatic brain injury in humans. This is the corpus callosum. And then the neuropathologists, they use the stain of APP, they find these APP accumulations, and this is a diagnostic tool to claim that the, 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 the patient has traumatic brain injury. And then we try to probe this using our system, and then you can see here that when you before, when you stretch the cells, they, they have this wave phenotype that's mimic particular this. And if I perform an IF in the cells, you can see that there is APP accumulation that's kind of similar to this. And this shows us that we are going in the right direction. And the idea is that APP is a protein that's always moving up and down in, in neurites. And the field hypothesized that when you see these aggregations, means APP is somehow is stopping to move in these axons. And then us, for the first time, we show like a before and after, like an approach. Um, uh, when we stretch the cells, the APP movement stops. And not only that, if you keep uh, analyzing the timing course, you can see that the, the aggregates start to, to be formed, showing that the first time that mechanical trauma somehow triggered these APP accumulations, and we think that this is behind the TBI AD pathway. And if you want to know more, please visit the, these two posters. Thank you.